Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about Apache Storm. So this will be our last real-time data processing engine. So in the previous lecture, we have seen all about Apache Flink, why it is used, and we have also seen one example where we have put some data and process it in real time. So in this lecture, let's talk about Storm and see what it brings on the table. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I hope you probably guessed that Apache Storm is our another streaming data processing tool which processes big data in real time. And it is designed to process the same in a very fault tolerant and horizontally scalable way. So if you're talking about big data, fault tolerance and horizontal scalability is must because your system should be able to add more worker node to able to process such huge volumes of data. So for that purpose, all these tools which we have discussed are suitable for big data and provides horizontal scalability. And it also manages their distributed environment via the Apache Zookeeper. So even though it is stateless, which we are going to see in the next topic, but Apache Storm uses Zookeeper as a part of their architecture. So let's discuss now in detail about its components and architecture. But before going forward, let's first talk about what is the difference between Hadoop and Apache Storm. So basically Hadoop and Storm are used for analyzing big data. So both of them complement each other and they have some differences in different aspects. So we are going to discuss it now. So the first one is data processing. So you already know that Hadoop is suitable for batch processing. But here, if you talk about Storm, it is more suitable for real time data processing where the data is coming from any IoT devices or click stream data from websites or some sensor like a temperature sensor. It could be anything. So if you talk about the latency in Hadoop, the latency would be high due to its batch processing nature. But if you talk about Storm, the latency will be very low as it processes all the data in real time and give us the required results. Next one is the architecture. So Hadoop's architecture is consist of HDFS for data storage and MapReduce for data processing. But here in Storm, it's, it consists of spouts and bolts. So what are those and what they mean that we are going to see in the next topic. And if we talk about the state, Hadoop is stateful in nature. So if the data stream stops, the latest state needs to be saved somewhere. But if you talk about Storm, it is stateless and very simple to implement. So these are some major differences of Hadoop and Storm. And one more thing that both the platforms are open source. So you can just get the data file, extract it, and it will be good for use. Now let's talk about the components of Storm. So these are all the components of Storm and how they fit together and have relationship with each other. The first one is the topology. So the complete logic for defining a series of steps that we know as a topology. So it will include the steps, the streams and the bolts. And it also contains the definitions for specifying there is a requirement for local topology or a remote topology. So now our next component is spouts. So the spouts is nothing but a source of stream. So generally Storm accepts the input data from various sources like Twitter streaming API, Kafka, Kestrel queue, but also you can write the sprouts to read data from various data sources. So the iSpout is the core interface for implementing the spouts. Then we have the bolts. So bolts are nothing but the logical processing units. So the spouts passes the data to the bolts and bolts processes and produces the new output stream. So as you can see, the spouts accepts the data from the different data sources and it passes the data to bolts and then it will be converted into the output stream. So these bolts can perform various operations like aggregation, joining, as well as we can interact with the data sources and databases. So it receives the data and emits one or more bolts. So here in this figure, it have emitted one bolt. Then it comes the tuple. So tuple, I hope you already know that it is a main data structure in Storm. So it is nothing but a list of ordered elements and by default, tuple supports all types of data types. So generally it is modeled as a set of comma separated value. So if you know Python, then you know about tuple. So the spouts and bolts are connected together and they form the topology. So as you can see, the 
combination of spouts and bolts forming the topology so the real time application logic is specified inside this tom topology so you can say topology as a directed graph where all the computation happens but this was like the components of storm now let's talk about its architecture and how it processes the data in real time so as you already know that the main highlight of storm is a fault tolerance so it means that it doesn't have any single point of failure because of its distributed processing so we can install apache storm on as many system as needed to increase the capacity of the application so we can add numerous data nodes to support your load so now let's discuss about the architecture of storm so here you can see in this figure we have different components are working together to process the data so first of all apache storm has a two types of node the first one is a nimbus node which is also known as the master node and then we have the supervisors which are also known as worker nodes which does all the ground work so nimbus is the central component of storm so as you can see nimbus which does all the administrative task so it analyzes the topology and gathers the different tasks that needs to be executed for our job and then it distributes the task on the available supervisors which nothing but does all the data processing so a supervisor will have one or more worker processes and it will delegate the task to the worker processes so to orchestrate this storm uses the internal messaging system for the communication between the nimbus and supervisors so let's talk about all these components in detail so first one is nimbus so as you already know that it is a master node of our storm cluster and all other nodes in the cluster are the worker nodes so this master node is responsible for distributing the different task among all the worker nodes and it assigns the task to worker nodes and also monitors if any failure happen in your system then comes the supervisor so the nodes that follows the instruction given by nimbus are known as supervisors so they can be having multiple worker processes and it governs the processes for completing the task which is submitted by the client and which is assigned by the nimbus obviously so then we have the worker process so worker process is nothing but a task which will be executed to a specific topology and this processes will not run by itself instead it will create the executors and ask them to perform some particular assigned task and they can be having multiple executors the executor is our next component which is nothing but a single thread of a worker process so it runs one or more tasks but only for a specific spout or bolt and then we have the task so task is nothing but the actual data processing so either it could be the spout or bolt which we have discussed in the previous topic and then comes the zookeeper in the picture so i hope you already know that zookeeper is nothing but a service which is used by the cluster for coordination between themselves and maintaining the shared data with a robust sync techniques so as nimbus is stateless but it also depends on zookeeper for monitoring the worker node status and it also help us supervising the interaction with our master node which is nimbus and it is also responsible to maintain the state of nimbus and the supervisor so this is the task of zookeeper and how it comes into picture of storm architecture but to sum it up why we are using storm why can't we use other processing tools like fling or apache spark streaming so let's talk about some of the benefits so first of all it's a open source very robust and very user friendly so that's why it can be utilized by a small organization or also large organization can also use storm for their data processing needs the next one would be very important it's fault tolerant flexible and very reliable and supports many programming languages so that's why storm is good choice for vast majority of developers the next one is it processes the data in real time so when you have the mission critical job and you process the data in real time as the data comes into the system then you can rely on storm because it uses real time data processing as compared to the hadoop which is more like a batch processing tool so its next benefit is it can keep the performance even under the increasing load by adding the resources in a horizontal manner so that's why it's highly scalable system 
where we can add commodity hardware in parallel and it processes the data in a distributed way to save your time as well as your cost. And the last one is it provides a guaranteed data processing even if any of the connected node failed because it detects that and bypasses the submitted task to other nodes which are available. So that's why Storm is very useful tool for your data processing net. So enough talking. In the next lecture, let's take one example and see how Apache Storm will process the data in real time. So I hope you like this lecture. So please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media, which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.